Long ago, an Ainu hunter encountered a bear in the forest and he followed it. The Ainu are the indigenous people of northern Japan. The bear jumped into the lake to escape from the hunter, but it suddenly disappeared under water. Suspicious of what he had witnessed, the hunter rowed a boat across the lake and looked down to the water. Then he noticed the Ito in mystical form lying still on the lake bottom. The hunter had never seen an Ito that large. And a closer look at the fish revealed the four legs of the bear sticking out from the mouth of the Ito. This story of a mystical giant Ito has been handed down over generations of Ainu in Hokkaido. As the snow melts in the mountains, rivers rise, and brown, muddy water flows down the valleys of the Soya Hills in Hokkaido. At first glance, it's cold, turbulent flow that doesn't appear to support any life. In the torrent of water, there are creatures that are rushing upstream from the sea and are quite large. The muddy river water becomes clearer in upstream small tributaries, making these fish more visible. Japan's largest freshwater fish, Ito or Sakhalin taimen, have come back to spawn again this spring. During this season, the mature male Ito develops a magnificent crimson color almost all over his body in an effort to attract the attention of female spawners. When the female Ito digs a hole in the stream bed and reaches a sufficient depth, the female and male position themselves over it so the female's eggs can be fertilized, and the eggs drop into the nest. The female Ito prepares several nests this way while moving through the river. And when she and her mates finish depositing fertilized eggs, they return back to the sea. Ito is a salmonid fish like salmon, trout, and char, and currently inhabits areas such as Hokkaido and Sakhalin. Juvenile Ito spend about a year in the river where they were born, but gradually descend the river as they grow. As adults, they spend most of the time in the estuary and sea where prey are abundant. Adult Ito feed mainly on small fish but occasionally attack snakes mice, and even waterfowl. Arising from folklore, a Japanese character kanji is used to represent Ito, and the character consists of two parts that translate as ogre fish, which reflects how the fish have long been recognized as a demon living in the waters of Hokkaido. Of course, in modern culture, these fish are revered for their beauty and deeply appreciated as an important element of Japan's rich biodiversity. Here, I would like to talk about some ecological findings about Ito from recent studies. Like salmon, Ito grow large in the sea, and when mature, they ascend the river for spawning. At this stage, they show a homing instinct, guided by olfactory cues that allows them to return to their natal stream. Ito were found to have a particularly precise homing ability for salmonids, with nearly 90% of returning adults navigating back to the same small tributaries from year to year. While Pacific salmon end their lives after one spawning, Ito do not. Ito spawn multiple times in their lifetime and live over 20 years. It seems that Ito can have more offspring than salmon, but that is not necessarily true. By the time they become parents, many die, and the number of children that survive is small.
Our research has shown that 70% of Ito returned to spawn in this river over two consecutive years. According to folklore, these fish are as strong as demons, but in reality these fish have suffered greatly due to a number of factors and they are now considered critically endangered. This is because they have completely disappeared from some of the rivers they once inhabited, and because their abundance has significantly declined in rivers where they survived. So why did Ito decline in their abundance and the number of rivers they inhabit and become endangered? The answer to that question relates back to their fidelity to specific spawning areas. Once these spawning areas become degraded or lost entirely, these fish do not readily disperse to other suitable habitat. Now, very few rivers in Japan allow fish to move freely up and downstream. This dam provides clean drinking water for people living in the basin. This area used to abound in migratory Ito at the time of dam construction, although many became trapped in this man-made reservoir upstream of the dam. They have survived for generations. In fact, even though Ito are trapped and prevented from returning to the sea, if provided with enough food, they can complete their life history within the reservoir and its tributaries and produce offspring. This phenomenon is called landlocked. Even though they can produce offspring, some Ito find it impossible to complete their life cycle. This is the place where dam water spills over the dam. The jumping Ito are the ones that come from the sea to overcome this 30 meter high concrete wall and enter the reservoir and its small tributaries. These fish originated from the reservoir tributaries over a decade earlier. How do we know this? First, as I mentioned earlier, Ito have a strong homing instinct to return to their natal rivers. Second, clues to their origin are contained in ear bones called otoliths. I found that elements in the otoliths from adult Ito captured by a fisherman near the mouth of this river were similar in composition to the water in the reservoir tributaries. This provided evidence supporting the idea that these fish originated in the reservoir. These fish are migratory and some Ito instinctively migrate downstream, even over this intimidating 30 meter high spillway to reach the sea. However, once mature, these fish are incapable of passing over the dam to reach their natal tributary. There are still some important unanswered questions like can these adult Ito spawn somewhere downstream of the dam? Or do they simply resorb their eggs and return to the sea? And perhaps an even more important question is, can the landlocked Ito population above the dam persist into the future? There are all kinds of barriers that fragment rivers and fish habitats. This can be called a dam, but more generally it is called a weir, which is a small structure crossing a river channel to control sediment transport and prevent disasters. It is not as tall as a dam, but it still is impossible for Ito to jump here and head upstream. Fortunately, this weir is equipped with a fish ladder, a corridor for migratory fishes. Even though there is a fish ladder, it's not easy to go upstream against a torrent of water.
weirs like this are built in tens of thousands of places all over Hokkaido, but less than 10% have fish ladders. Had there been no fish ladder on this weir, Ito would have disappeared completely from this river. This tunnel-like structure is a water conduit called a culvert. In place of a bridge, it is buried underground so that a stream flows under the road. There are many culverts and streams where Ito spawn. At first glance, they do not appear to interfere with fish migrations. However, if the plunging water deepens outlet after many years, water levels lower and a tall waterfall may be created. If this is the case, it becomes hard for fish to pass the structure to go upstream, just like a dam or a weir. A box culvert like this one provides no place where the water flow is reduced during floods and freshets. Not many Ito can pass through a long, empty, flat, concrete surface against this flow. To create places where fish can rest in a culvert is one solution. Each culvert may not pose a serious problem for Ito. However, compared to dams and weirs, the number of culverts is overwhelmingly large. Furthermore, being located deep in the mountains, they barely receive adequate maintenance. Consequently, if they become blocked with woody debris or collapse, they can be highly problematic for Ito and other creatures moving in the river. Combining headwaters, rivers run through forests, villages, and towns, and often farmlands before emptying into the sea. Continuous, uninterrupted flow of water is what rivers should be, and is an essential prerequisite for Ito and other migratory creatures to survive and leave offspring to the next generation. Once this connection is lost by human activities and their movements between the river and the sea are interrupted, they are at an increased risk of extinction. Man-made structures such as dams, weirs, or culverts protect our lives, property, and livelihoods and provide drinking water and electricity. It will be necessary for humans to modify or regulate rivers to prevent disasters such as floods while receiving benefits from the waters. But it should never be done in exchange for biodiversity at the expense of Ito and other creatures in the river. In the future, we feel it is important to keep natural stream habitat intact and protected while making efforts to restore degraded and fragmented stream habitat through river restoration efforts. How we treat our rivers moving forward will determine whether we drive Ito toward extinction or protect them from future threats. Fortunately, there is still time to make wise decisions about how we conserve freshwater habitat in Japan and across the world.